You're watching Bill on Bankruptcy. I'm Lee Pacquiao. Joining me now, as always, is Bloomberg News Bankruptcy Columns, Bill Rochelle. Be sure to go and read his daily bankruptcy column. It's available on BloombergLaw.com, and it's also on the Bloomberg Terminal. Welcome. Good day. The Second Circuit penned a decision, um, an important decision, on whether the question of hedge funds uh, managed from the U.S. must be liquidated in the U.S. or whether they can be liquidated in the Caribbean uh, if they happen to be incorporated there. How did this uh, case come out? This comes out of the Madoff fiasco. One of Madoff's largest, if not the largest, feeder fund was called Fairfield Century. Like all feeder funds, practically, it was managed out of New York, but incorporated in the Cayman, or excuse me, the British Virgin Islands. After the Madoff fiasco, the uh, feeder fund ran into trouble, of course, and a liquidation was begun and was proceeding for, let's call it a year, in the British Virgin Islands. At that point, the Virgin Island liquidators filed a Chapter 15 petition in New York asking assistance from the New York court. Now, Chapter 15 is not a full-blown bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. It only just helps out the foreign court. Some of the investors complained and said, no, 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 you can't do that. The Cayman, or excuse me, the, the BVI is not what's called the center of main interest, not the nerve center, not the principal place of business, because it was basically just a post office address. The bankruptcy judge, in a very erudite opinion by Burton Lifland, ruled that it was perfectly okay for the principal bankruptcy to be in the Caribbean because the liquidation had been going on for, let's call it a year, down there. The case was upheld in the district court, went to the Court of Appeals, the Second Circuit, and guess what? The opinion by uh, Chief District Judge uh, Dennis uh, Jacobs was just the same as the bankruptcy judge, saying, yes, it is perfectly all right to have the principal liquidation of this hedge fund in the British Virgin Islands. Hmm. It is important. Great for the local economy. Uh, it certainly is. Uh, cases like this are unusual down there because of uh, their size. Uh, you have to remember that this doesn't mean that any hedge fund can be liquidated in the, uh, uh, in the islands. It only would work if there has been a liquidation proceeding from, for some unspecified number of months hmm. in uh, the Caribbean. This means, as a practice point, that if you are an investor in one of these funds that goes kaput, you need to file an uh, involuntary bankruptcy as soon as possible in the United States. Otherwise, you may be stuck with being in one of those islands. And Bill, next item, the Madoff Ponzi scheme made law last week on the, uh, the safe harbor and bankruptcy uh, rule. I gather we have a slight loophole in the otherwise broadly interpreted uh, safe harbor limiting when people can be sued, uh, though they were trading in securities. Who wrote the opinion and uh, what does it teach us? Well, it was written by, of course, none other than Jed Rakoff. Most of his opinions have been going against the Madoff trustee. This one, however, is on his side. I must say the opinion is not unexpected. Rakoff previously had ruled that the safe harbor applies in the Madoff liquidation. And as you know, the safe harbor protects uh, people who thought they were trading in securities. The Madoff trustee early in the case argued the safe harbor doesn't apply at all because there was never a single security purchase. But Rakoff to that back in September of 2011 said, oh, nonsense. And uh, he ruled that it does apply. So now we have the other side of the coin where the customer actually knew that there were no trading in securities, that the whole thing was a big bogus Ponzi scheme fraud. In that case, where the customer knew that uh, there uh, was a fraud going on, Rakoff, in his opinion, says that the safe harbor does not apply. Therefore, we now know that the safe harbor does not simply apply across the board to everything that a broker does when it is a flat-footed fraud. This case is uh, probably going to go up on appeal. So, you know, let's call it uh, 18 months from now, we'll have something from the U.S. Court of Appeals in Manhattan on the same subject. Right. We'll see how it goes. And uh, Judge of the Week. Judge of the Week is Sean Lane, one of the new bankruptcy judges in New York. He wrote an opinion on how bankrupt companies can sidestep the prohibition against severance or retention bonuses for senior management. Bill, what is the teaching of Lane's opinion uh, in the American Airlines reorg? 
Well, the teaching is whenever there is a problem with the statute, use language and get around it. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm talking about. Congress got very annoyed that managers of bankrupt companies were receiving big retention bonuses. In other words, they'd be paid perhaps millions of dollars simply for staying in their jobs. Congress got its nose out of joint and basically prohibited uh, retention bonuses and severely limited bonuses, uh, let's call them severance bonuses, to be paid if somebody loses his job at a senior executive level. AMR proposed to give a $20 million severance bonus to its outgoing uh, CEO, Thomas Horton. AMR argued that, oh, it's okay because this severance is not paid by the company while it's in bankruptcy. It's actually going to be paid by the merged airlines after bankruptcy. Well, Judge Lane did not buy that at all, said basically, hooey, uh, you're just using language to try to skirt what Congress intended, and so he therefore prohibited that bonus now. However, he opened the door uh, for, let's say, a loophole. What he said was, if this bonus is proposed as part of a Chapter 11 reorganization plan, then once it is washed through the Chapter 11 voting process, it may be very conceivable that the bonus will be approved at that time. He didn't say he would, he just left the door open. So now what I think we have is an invitation for bankrupt companies to put their retention and severance bonuses in a Chapter 11 plan. I will be very eager to see if plans of this sort ultimately will be upheld at an appellate level. All right, we're talking about a $20 million severance bonus here. Mind-boggling numbers. We're going to wrap, as usual, uh, with a segment where we discuss new appellate court decisions. And for the third week in the row, we're going back to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. Don't tell me it's another decision by Judge Richard Posner. Nope, nope. This week it's not Posner. It's his equally erudite colleague, Frank Easterbrook. One of the big problems for a lot of folks these days is that in bankruptcy, it is very difficult and indeed darn near impossible to discharge or get rid of student loan debt. Right. And as the decisions come down one after another, it gets difficult and more difficult to where, frankly now, Lee, it's practically impossible to discharge student loan debt. Well, Judge Easterbrook took the bull by the horns and he wrote an opinion in a case called Krieger versus Educational Credit Management, which I think turns the tide. He did everything he could short of actually reversing a prior Seventh Circuit opinion, which had required that the bankrupt show a certainty of hopelessness before discharging student loan debt. Judge it's a tough standard to meet. Well, a certainty I, of hopelessness. I, I, <laughs> like, exactly. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Uh, what Easterbrook said was that language does not seem to fit in neatly with the standard in the bankruptcy code, which is quote, undue hardship, end quote. He also noted that Congress did not bar discharge of student loans. This, methinks, is a very important decision. Certainly it is binding in the Seventh Circuit. I am very eager to see if it is adopted in other circuits because, as I said right now, Lee, uh, you can come out of school with, uh, let's say, several hundred thousand dollars in debt you can be virtually unemployed, yet in most places you'll find it impossible to get rid of your student loan debt. Perhaps this decision by Judge Easterbrook will start pushing courts in the other direction. It's a big deal. Bill, thanks for Thank that. You. That's Bloomberg News Bankruptcy Council, Bill Rochelle. If you'd like to learn more about the cases and issues we just ran through, be sure to go and read Bill's column. It's available on BloombergLaw.com and it's also on the Bloomberg Terminal. You can also see more of our videos on YouTube and you can follow our updates on Twitter. I'm Lee Pacquia. Thanks for watching.